Universal Audio recently announced their foray into the effect pedal world with the Starlight Echo Station, Golden Reverberator, and Astra Modulation Machine. If you haven't already checked them out, we have demos of all three pedals on guitar, bass, and synthesizer right here on our YouTube channel. So today we're hanging out with Tor Mogensen from UA to go behind the scenes and find out what it took to bring these pedals to life. All right, Tor, so thanks so much for hanging with us today. Uh, first question is to bring everyone up to speed for those who've essentially been living under a rock for the last month or two. Uh, give us a brief overview of what these pedals are all about. So these pedals are all about getting the best possible classic vintage sound for free classic effects types. So delay, reverb and modulation. So if you're, imagine you're stranding on a desert island and you have to pick your favorite delays, you can only bring three, your favorite reverbs, you can only bring three, and your favorite modulation effects, which ones would it be? You know, as to most guitar players, that would be like some classic vintage pieces of equipment, right? And that's exactly what you get in these pedals. And you get them done to a degree of realism that you can find in any other pedals on the market. So let's break it down a little bit more. Can we go through each pedal and you can walk us through the different algorithms that are included? Yeah, so we could start with the, the reverb pedal. It's called Golden Reverberator, and it features a spring reverb taken from a, a really great sounding spring tank from a, um, from a deluxe reverb uh, from 65. Um, there's actually a couple of other springs in there that maybe we can go into later, but that's the basic one that's in there. Um, the next one is a plate reverb um, taken from a very legendary German um, plate device uh, that's been used throughout, all the way from the 50s, all the way up through the 70s and 80s, and it's been on countless legendary albums, uh, including Van Halen 1 and other, you know, really, really cool, uh, cool guitar tones. Um, and the last one is a equally legendary digital reverb. Uh, so that's sort of your hall slash room reverb. Uh, again, taken from a classic device this time from the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, that's probably the most used reverb ever. Um, if you guys are familiar with uh, U2 or Daniel Lenoir, those sort of larger than life big ethereal reverbs that's the sound you get um, and anybody who's ever been in a studio will probably have recognized this sort of classic little uh, white uh, controller that would sit on the console with these cool faders um, and a little uh, display on top of it so next up is um, a starlight echo station and again as i said before it's the same sort of philosophy that applies so three classic delays in one pedal the first one being um, the most legendary tape echo ever created um, the echoplex um, and this is actually a model of two different versions of the echoplex uh, along with variations of uh, tape age and some other really cool things. And it's, it's incredibly uh, realistic sounding. Um, the second one is a, an equally classic um, analog bucket brigade style delay, also made famous by The Edge and some other guitar players. Uh, super warm sounding and known for its lush sort of modulation, chorus and vibrato effect that you can add to the delay repeats only. Um, and the last one is a digital delay for when you want those sort of more pristine sounds. Um, and this is actually taken from uh, our UAD library. It's called Precision Delay. Um, users who are familiar with Ox will also know that this is, the, this is a... It's sort of an evolvement of the, um, of the delay algorithm found in Ox as well. And the last one is um, Astra Modulation Machine. And on that one you get... Um, an absolutely stellar sounding classic bucket brigade chorus slash uh, vibrato one of the very first pedals ever made um, and a total classic uh, sort of a big chunky japanese pedal so the second algorithm um, is a blue rack flanger um, actually a flanger and doppler uh, made by the same company that also did the um, the classic gray flanger that everybody knows and loves um, this one can do the same sounds, but it's more of a studio gear 
Um, so it can both do those sort of classic guitar sounds, but it can also get into some really subtle, almost chorusy tones, as well as uh, classic through zero flanging as well, tape flanging sounds. Um, and last but not least, we have um, a 65 tremolo, which is taken from the same deluxe reverb that uh, I mentioned before on, uh, on the Golden Reverberator. Um, but this time, obviously, it's the tremolo circuit, including the entire tube circuitry around it. Um, it's just a really, really nice, warm sounding tremolo. So those are the three pedals and the three effects you get with each of those pedals. Awesome. Thanks for that, man. So a pretty killer added value with these pedals exists by utilizing the USB port on the back. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so the USB port, obviously, you know, when as soon as we start talking modeling, these are digital pedals. So the USB port is for two things. So first of all, it's for any sort of software update that might come in the future. And I might as well stress right now, we don't have any planned right now, but you know, you never know. Um, the other thing is that we actually decided to give uh, customers who buy these pedals the opportunity to get a couple of extra free effects if they decide to register uh, their pedal with us. So the USB uh, connection on the back of the pedal allow you to hook up to a computer. On the UA um, webpage, uh, there is uh, on the UAFX webpage, there is a download link to um, to an updater app that allow you to connect the pedal and update the firmware if there is an update, but also to register your pedal. And once you do that, you actually download um, an extra algorithm, or in some cases, two extra algorithms for these pedals. So if we wanted to go through these real quickly, so as I said before, each of the three pedals have three effects, plus now these extra ones. So for Golden Reverberator, um, this is some extra programs that came along with the um, with the L224 uh, digital uh, hall reverb that I mentioned earlier. Um, that original classic unit uh, on top of the hall and room algorithms or programs as they called it um, that we put into the pedal. Uh, that unit also had some great sounding chamber and plate sounds um, digitally emulated but they have totally their own sort of sound. Um, and when you when you register your Golden Reverberator, you get those programs as well. So even though it's one algorithm, it's actually three different extra reverbs that you get on top of that. Um, for Starlight Echo Station, um, you get something really cool that's actually UA developed way back in the 50s. Um, so the original founder of, um, of Universal Audio uh, Bill Putnam designed this really cool, quirky uh, delay device that actually works by taking the sound and sending it through a garden hose. And the length of the garden hose actually determines the length of the delay. Um, and it's this really, really cool lo-fi sound that works great for just getting some, you know, different delay sounds that you wouldn't have heard before. I really like it for slapback, but you can use it for all sorts of different things. Um, and it's a really unique sound. And to my knowledge, it's never been put in a pedal before. Um, so you get that with the uh, Starlight. Um, and then for, um, for Astra, you get two extra algorithms. The first one you get is a very, very classic orange one-up phaser. I'm sure everybody knows that. Um, you get that and you actually get two different versions. Guys who are familiar with that pedal will know that there's like a script version and there's a block letter version um, and you get both. They sound dramatically different um, and you get both, uh, both versions when you register. And the last one is a really cool new algorithm we developed, which is, uh, we call it the Dharma Trim 61. So the basis of this algorithm is taken from a brown face Fender amp. Uh, so it's essentially a harmonic tremolo, which is done in a different way than just your classic sort of uh, volume up and down, modulating the volume um, tremolo. It has more of a vibey, facey kind of sound, which is super cool. But on top of that, we actually added a dynamic uh, part to this algorithm, which allow you to control uh, the speed of the uh, of the tremolo uh, with your picking intensity. So basically, you can set it so that the harder you pick, 
the faster the tremolo becomes or vice versa, the harder you pick, the slower the tremolo becomes. So it almost gives you this sort of fake Leslie kind of thing. That's really, really cool. Um, so I think that was a really long and roundabout way of explaining what the USB port on the back of the pedals are for. It's for software updates and it's for getting really cool new effects for your pedals. So this was you and James Santiago essentially heading up this project. Can you give us a little bit of background on what your respective roles were when you guys were whiteboarding the idea for these? Yeah. So I think initially uh, and actually throughout the process, my role has been more on the conceptual side in terms of figuring out, you know, what are these pedals? Which effects should be in them? How many knobs? Uh, how many foot switches? So this sort of more conceptual start with a blank page and then sort of figure out where to take it from there. Um, and then uh, obviously with James sparring throughout the process, but that's been my main responsibility throughout the process. Um, and then James's responsibility has been very much on the audio side of things. So making sure that the algorithms sound exactly the way they should, making sure that when you you know, all the things like when you switch between the different algorithms in the pedals that, you know, the delay times does, doesn't jump all over the place. And, you know, just making sure that everything sounds nice and there are no, you know, bad spots for when where the parts are. And, you know, I'd say anything that's audio sound related, that's James. And anything that's more conceptual based, that's me. But again, the lines blur. So, you know, I definitely have a say in the audio thing and James has a lot of input on the on the design and and more business stuff uh, as well so so we sort of tech team on a lot of the stuff. You know, I've heard James talk extensively about the nuances of the EP3 circuit, counting tape splices, listening to different preamps, but I'd like to know what were some other nuances that you guys obsessed over with other classic pieces of gear during the R&D process and you know just why that was so important to hone in on that stuff. Yeah, I think, I mean, one of one of the algorithms that I think that we're all incredibly proud of is the spring reverb in, in, in Golden. Um, personally, to be honest, and, and I can say that at least with a certain amount of, of, uh, of confidence because I've done reverb pedals in the past, um, I have never found a pedal where I felt that the spring reverb really captured the true sound, the true essence of, of what a real spring reverb, what a real spring tank in a real amp sounds like. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm biased here, but I, I truly think that uh, that this new algorithm that uh, that we developed for Golden does that. It, it sounds incredible. Um, and again, it's this it's the same unrelenting attention to detail that that makes sure that, you know, that that you get there. So during the development process, um, we started out by modeling the tank and the springs and sort of felt like, yeah, okay, cool. Now we have it and, uh, you know, we should be good to go. And then as we were listening to it and this, I should totally, I have to point the finger at James here. That's really his credit uh, on, on, on the hearing and the ear side. Um, just, you know, figuring out that there's something missing and then suddenly realizing that there is a tube circuitry on either side of the spring tank that's actually a really important part of the overall sound of a, of a spring tank and then suddenly realize we actually have to make a little tube amp circuit or not a little actually a, you know a big one and, and, a, and a complicated one but you know just make just making sure that everything that that is part of that circuit and is part of that sound is actually in the in, in the final product or in the final algorithm. Um, and then on top of that, just going through, I mean, I wish you guys could see some photos of all the spring tanks that was lying around. It, it was ridiculous. It's, it's, let's just say I've never worked in a place where, where the attention to detail, the attention to sonic detail is so obsessive as, as it is at UA. Um, and that's a real treat. So Tor, I know these are just starting to make their way out into the world for users to check them out. But, you know, aside from that, the lucky folks that have had an opportunity to play them, um, even internally, I know there's a lot of guitar players at UA. Uh, what has the response to the pedals been like so far? What have you guys seen? 
I mean, the general temperature and the general uh, reception has been amazing. We we couldn't be more proud. And I think that finally, you know, we've been working on this for over two years now. Um, and finally, we've had the opportunity to actually even just send it to, to, uh, to some more people within the company. And everybody has been dying, when can I get it? And everybody is, you know, internally in the company, everybody is freaking out about it. And trust me, it's a, it's a hard crowd to please because, you know, you go into it any cubicle and there are guitars and there's like enormous pedal boards and there are guys that are maybe not as much into pedals but then they have like your rack setups that where you, it just blows your mind so there's a lot of guys at UA that know effects um, and you know the quality of the algorithms the quality of the hardware everything is you know has been it's been a really positive reception and I one thing that I really was happy about in terms of that is you know obviously as somebody who hasn't worked for UA for that long um, and coming into the company and, and and sort of you know championing this this project that you know wanting to make sure that this is something that everybody at UA and obviously especially uh, Bill our owner is is proud of actually putting that UA stamp on because that 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 UA logo means something and it, there is a certain you know, it's a stamp of approval and it's a stamp of quality that, you know, you don't want to take for granted and you don't want to sort of, you know, devalue. Um, so the other the other section of, of people who actually heard these pedals, we can get into the whole forum thing after that, people who are more discussing based on features but haven't actually heard the pedals, um, at least not played them themselves. But we sent them out to, between James and I and our artist relations uh, team we know a lot of guitar players and we sort of send it out to like a selected little group of guys and the reception has been incredible um, one of the things that we always try to do is that we want to make sure that we find some guys that are intimately familiar you, typically you can't find one guitar player that would know all these algorithms and would know the original units and just be able to say yeah, yeah this is it but maybe you can find a guy and i don't want to name any names yet at least but maybe you can find a guy that's just totally known for using you know echo plexus or maybe you can find a guy that's just like the spring reverb nut um, and you send the pedal to them and if they come back and say like i literally can't hear the difference between you know my old my old echoplex and 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 uh, and this one then you know you've you've done a pretty decent job i think so so i think that's been the positive in terms of people who actually tried the pedals out obviously once you start getting into more of the you know the forum and you know you know regular users that are anxiously awaiting these things the overall reception has been amazing. Um, obviously, they've only been able to hear the pedals uh, through our demos and you know the the artists that we've asked to create some some audio for these. Um, and there's been a few guys, you know, if you guys go online and you check out, um, I think Josh Smith, amazing blues guitar player from LA, he has a few snippets out playing it. Um, and there's a couple of other guys that'll have that. Tim Pierce as well. Um, so if somebody wants to find some other places to hear them beyond like the the, uh, the UA webpage and obviously Vintage King and, uh, and 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 other places, those are also some places to to check the pedals out in a different uh, different setting in a different environment. Um, and I think the anticipation of of you know getting these and getting to hear them is really big. Obviously, when you know when you put something out into the world, there's also a little bit of you know, not necessarily negative stuff, but I think what often happens is that people see something and they get super excited about it because they think it's for the, you know, this would work for them and they want to try it out. And then they found out that, you know, inevitably sometimes we as designers make some design decisions that means that they maybe can't use the pedals in their workflow. So as an example, these pedals don't have MIDI. That's a conscious decision. And we are fully aware that there are guys out there who use MIDI with their pedals. But, you know, we decided that we wanted to keep them fairly clean and easy to use. So we decided to omit that. But, you know, I think those kind of things are the only slightly negative things we've seen so far. Um, 
you know, the vast majority of comments are super positive. So, so we're really excited to actually see them get out into the world and start being used to create some killer music. So jumping off of that, and I didn't have a chance to do this while I was demoing them, but are these capable of accepting hotter line level signals to mix with? Yeah, you could theoretically do that. So, I mean, the pedals are designed so that um, so that they can handle a pretty wide, you know, input range, ranging from like your old, almost dead magnets of like an old vintage Strat that's you know degaussed and everything up to a signal that's definitely pretty hot because we wanted to make sure that these pedals could work in the effect loop of like a more modern amplifier um, for the guys who use more gain. Um, so, you know, they're, they're not designed specifically for line level, but some of these, uh, some of these effects loop and amps are pretty hot. Um, and we've definitely, I mean, right now I'm running my pedals through the line outputs of an aux with no problems. I could probably clip them if I cranked the aux all the way up, but you know, um, but I don't have to anyway, so it, it's all fine. You can totally do that. So, kind of a spicy question: Is anything potentially changed about the pedals from the initial launch, feature-wise? Um, well, there's been a lot of talks and a lot of discussions, and obviously, when you know, when you have a platform, which is you, you know, we consider this, you know the the UAFX pedals a platform that an allows us to put different algorithms on it you know at the end of the day the sky is the limit you know we could at least within within reason and within limits do anything so the question of course becomes like what makes sense for the customer group we want to um, we want to address what is our expertise in the market um, and what do we think honestly what do we think could sell so obviously i hope you know i hope you're okay with the fact that i can't divulge where we're going next we never talk specifically about future products um all i can say is that we have a ton of ideas ranging from things that would probably seem more obvious or like you know down the line of what you'd expect from a guitar pedal company and things that are you know way out there and which ones will do is always that's all that's probably the toughest part of of my job is you know deciding which things to actually do because at the end of the day you have you know maybe a hundred ideas and you get to do one or two of them is there a possibility to expand the line possibly we'll see some more pro audio centric releases maybe a compressor eq suite of effects uh i mean i would love to have a distressor 550a in my pedal board I'm starting to see more and more pedal companies actually also come out with stuff that are that is more like oh so here's like a mic pre from like you know here's an emulation of a mic pre or something like that that might be interesting to put on your board obviously the the balance there between between us and not not the audience the balance of course is that as 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 you mentioned earlier is that you know if you talk to a lot of guitar players and you ask them about you know analog delays or tape echoes or spring reverbs a lot of them will know you know quite a they'll have quite a bit of knowledge about that but if you ask them what a distressor is you know maybe they might not know so it'll take a little bit more education uh, to to you know to get there but you know there's there are definitely some some products out there that you know algorithms that we have right now in you know in our portfolio that could be really cool to have in in a pedal format for sure i feel like this could be its own separate video but you know as time goes on we're seeing more and more engineers mixing with pedals and more guitar players with apollos building at home studios do you see these pedals as a bridge between the two worlds of musician and producer yeah i i totally see that and i i, I think it's a super good point because i'll be honest i'm you know I can find my way around a studio and do recording, but I'm by no means a champ. And I, you know, the amount of knowledge I have on like old pedals and, you know, vintage Fender amps and, and, and guitars, you know, that doesn't equate to knowing, you know, the, the subtle differences between different variations of, of old mic pre's and stuff like that, or, you know, ribbon mics. I, I just, you know, I'd never sort of, 
went down the rabbit hole on that whole side of the uh, of the audio you know of the audio world i'm almost you know back in the day i used to be the kind of guy who'd show up with a guitar and my my gear and it's like you know just expect the, the engineer and the producer to kind of do their thing and then you know um and you know over the last years i've slowly gotten that buck to the point now that it's getting dangerous because that's a really expensive hobby to have on top of you know all the guitar stuff um and i think especially in this is in this day and age where you know when i started playing guitar and i started doing recording and making albums and stuff you know having a home recording setup was just not a possibility you know you, you just didn't do that so you had to go to a real studio and somebody would be there and sort of manning the cockpit um, but these days you know not only is it possible in a lot of ways it's also mandatory because you know who can afford to go to ocean way or something like that and actually you know pay the the daily the daily fee to 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 have that uh, the opportunity to to record there we you know as musicians who want to you know express ourselves and 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 record stuff we have to be able to do that ourselves and we have to learn how to do that and luckily you know there's never been a better time to do that and right now you know the equipment is great uh, the plugins are great uh, the amount of information that's online is great and i think that i think that you know even just the fact that you are now making guitar pedals and obviously now becoming more interesting to, at least to a segment of guitar players who don't consider themselves recording guitar players but more just like you know i'm into guitar i play guitar and i can create a great sound through my amp but how to actually get that great sound coming out of my amp and actually put it on tape i have no idea about i think that's i hope that's gonna you know get some guitar players excited about this whole other thing um because it's a ton of fun and it's really rewarding as well and it'll make you get a better guitar player to be honest if you start recording yourself and listening to your playing sometimes you're i definitely found out myself when i started to do that that, that you realize there are some mistakes and some quirks in your playing that maybe you should work on Friends, thanks so much for hanging out with us today, learning a little bit more about Universal Audio's newest line of effect pedals. Thanks to Tor for giving us the lowdown on everything. If you're interested in a Starlight Echo Station, Golden Reverberator, Astro Modulation Machine, anything at all from Universal Audio, hit us up at vintageking.com, reach out to your audio consultant, do hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.